the days of the American Revolution, their colors have been one of the most important elements in a military unit, as soldiers kept their position in formation by dressing on the colors. At the center of today's formation, and bearing the national color, is the 3rd Infantry's Continental Color Guard, led to George Washington in 1776 to be his personal guard. Next on line, dressed in the Continental Musician's uniform, is the United States Army Old Guard Fight and Drum Corps. During the American Revolution, musicians wore the reverse colors of... Sergeant Major is the custodian of the colors. When the colors are not displayed for the commander, they are in the care of the Command Sergeant Major. Command Sergeant Major Beeson will pass the colors of the 3rd United States Infantry Regiment, the Old Guard, to Colonel Davis for the last time. Colonel Davis passes the colors to Major General Becker to relinquish his command of the regiment. Major General Becker then passes the colors to Colonel Garkey, symbolizing the assumption of command. Colonel Garkey then passes the colors back to Command Sergeant Major Beeson, again entrusting him with the care of the colors. Under the provisions of Army Regulation 600-20, the undersigned assumes command of the United States Army 3rd United States Infantry Regiment. 16 June 2016, signed Jason T. Garkey. Colonel Infantry Commanding. Commanding. Ladies and gentlemen, Major General Bradley Becker. Well, good morning, everyone. Dear officers, military attaches, civilian aides to the Secretary of the Army, members of the Arlington Police Department, former regimental commanders and command sergeants major, other distinguished guests, family, and friends, welcome to today's change of command between Colonel Johnny Davis and Colonel Jason Garkey. I'd like to start by recognizing the U.S. Army Band, Pershing, Pershing Zone, and all of the great soldiers of the 3rd U.S. M2 Regiment the Old Guard. As always, you make us extremely proud. Please join me in a round of applause for these great soldiers. I want to extend a special welcome to Johnny's family, or as I like to call them, his infantry squad. His lovely bride of 25 years, Stacy, daughters Lucy, Johnny, Rachel, and Penny. Sergeant Medea Davis, United States Marine Corps, currently stationed at the NSA, and as you heard, uh, Lieutenant Whitney Davis, not with us today, she's currently deployed to Afghanistan. Uh, please join me in a round of applause for this great Army and Marine family. In the interest of time and out of respect for these soldiers standing on the field, I am not going to cover all of the accomplishments of the Old Guard during Johnny's tenure as the regimental commander. There are just too many accomplishments and we'd be here far too long. Instead, I'm going to talk briefly about why the Old Guard has been such a great organization under Colonel Davis's leadership. 
The Old Guard is the face of the Army in the National Capital Region and often the face of our nation to the world. As such, the soldiers of the 3rd U.S. Infantry Regiment represent the dedication and professionalism of our entire Army. And with that tremendously important strategic responsibility, we have been blessed to have Colonel Johnny Davis as our Army Ambassador for these last two years. You will not find a more professional, upbeat, positive, selfless servant than Colonel Johnny Davis. Johnny is one of those leaders you just want to be around because his positive energy rubs off on you and makes everyone around him better. Over the last two years, the Old Guard has taken on that positive energy, and it is evident in everything that they do. From full honors funerals to state arrivals to re-ceremonies, DA retirement ceremonies, dignified transfers to Spirit of America and other Army outreach events, everything the Old Guard does, they do with precision, pride, and with a selfless attitude that says it's not about us, rather it's about the unknowns, a grieving family, a head of state, or representing our army to the nation. And this selfless attitude is a direct reflection of Colonel Davis's leadership. Johnny, you are a servant leader and an inspirational leader. You have left an indelible imprint on the old guard and on this entire community as you can see by the turnout here today, you will truly be missed. I would be remiss if I didn't recognize Stacy and all that she has done. Johnny's energy comes not only from his love for soldiers, but also from the love and support he receives from his family. Stacy, Johnny could not do what he does without you, and this regiment is a better unit because of your caring and concern for our soldiers and their families. So thank you for your service. Johnny, I know that you will continue to do great things as the Executive Officer to General Brooks in Korea. We wish you, Stacy, and your entire infantry squad all the best in the future. And while we bid farewell to one great leader, we welcome another one. Colonel Jason Garkey is an experienced infantryman with a great reputation, and he is no stranger to the old guard. Jason was a platoon leader and XO in Charlie Company. He commanded the Honor Guard Company and served as the aide-de-camp to the Military District of Washington Commanding General, and I can tell you that is a thankless job. More recently, Jason served as a professor of military science, was a battalion commander in 3ID, and served on the Army staff. So I want to welcome Jason, his wife Kathy, and their two children, Tyler and Natalie, to the Old Guard and the Military District of Washington family. Jason, I have no doubt that under your leadership, the Old Guard will continue to set the standard and to excel as the face of our Army to the nation and to the world. Again, thank you all for being here today, 1st Regiment Old Guard. Ladies and gentlemen, Colonel Johnny K. Davis. First of all, good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to today's uh, Change of Command ceremony. You know, I told you it would be a, a beautiful so, uh, ceremony, and these soldiers are just uh, phenomenal. They're the best of the best. Uh, before we begin, I'd like to acknowledge some special guests in attendance today. You know, we got uh, multiple civilian aides to the Secretary of the Army, uh, Lieutenant General Murray, Lieutenant General Huntoon, former commander of the Old Guard, Lieutenant General Huggins, Lieutenant General Johnson, Lieutenant General Legere, uh, of course, Major General Becker and Mrs. Becker. Major General Hilbert, the Honorary Colonel of the Regiment and former MDWCG. Major General Jackson, uh, my former MDWCG when I was a company commander. Sir, thank you for your guidance over the years, especially your investment in me as a young company commander. Mr. Havelak, Senior Executive Service Leaders of the General Officers, Arlington National Cemetery staff, our interagency partners. We got former Old Guard commanders, especially uh, Brigadier General Jordan, and Colonel Offenberg uh, for your mentorship and guidance while serving as your Delta Company Commander. Uh, Command Sergeant Major Gooden, Command Sergeant Major Beeson. We got former Old Guard Sergeant Majors. Matter of fact, there's a platoon of them behind here uh, standing by. Uh, especially uh, Command Sergeant Major Butts, who kept me straight as a Company Commander. And our newest Honorary Sergeant Major of the Regiment, Command Sergeant Major uh, Harry Wimbro. Fellow Brigade Commanders, family, and friends, welcome. We are all honored by your presence here today. 
I'd like to draw your attention to the dedicated and outstanding soldiers standing before you. To the far left is the fantastic U.S. Army Band, Pershing Zone, commanded by Colonel Tim Houghton and Command Sergeant Major Smith. Also to your front stands the men and women of the Old Guard. Each of these hand-picked soldiers represent our nation to the public while training for contingencies, executing ceremonies, memorial fairs in Arlington National Cemetery, and outreach events. Whereas other units in the Army may sometimes interact with the local population, soldiers of the Old Guard routinely interact and perform for the American people and the world. Among these fine soldiers standing before you are the next generations of leaders that will lead our America's Army into the future. I cannot describe to you how much I deeply care about each and every one of, the, uh, of these soldiers and what they mean to Stacy and I. To the soldiers of the Old Guard, I'd like to say thank you. Thank you for your service, your dedication, and motivation. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give these amazing soldiers a big round of applause. You know, the great soldiers throughout the military district of Washington are led by a compassionate and mission-focused command team. They are Major General Becker and Command Sergeant Major Gooden. They set the example every day for us with their strong leadership, mentorship, and wonderful command climate. They are always present during training, at ceremonies, and hosting our nation's senior leaders and foreign dignitaries. We are incredibly lucky to have such an amazing and dedicated command team. Sir, thank you for your leadership, for your trust and confidence, and for allowing me to command this very historic regiment. I'd also like to thank Major General Buchanan and Command Sergeant Major Turnbull for their leadership and mentorship as I took command. Your guidance and wisdom helped me grow and foster this regiment. To the command teams of the Old Guard, I remember uh, Colonel uh, Blake Connors, Lieutenant Colonel Dave Taylor, Lieutenant Colonel Ryan Morgan, and Lieutenant Colonel Jody Schultz. Thank you for your devotion and dedication. Together, we achieved much to care for these soldiers, provided predictability, improved all aspects of our soldiers' quality of life, from the equipment they use every day to the barracks they come home to at night. We met unique challenges and have left the Old Guard functioning at a higher efficiency because we put the priority on soldiers first. To my Ranger buddies, Command Sergeant Major Sam Stoker and most recent Command Sergeant Major Scott Beeson, thank you for everything. We came together and accomplished the regiment's goals, invested in our NCO Corps, and left a lasting legacy that will be seen for years to come. Command Sergeant Major Beeson, you're a phenomenal leader, proven warrior, and exactly the right leader to serve the men and women of the Old Guard. There are many more to thank, but I simply want to say thank you for your tireless support to Stacy and I over the years. To my family, to my beautiful wife Stacy of 25 years, our six daughters, Lieutenant Davis, Sergeant Davis, her husband, Sergeant Burfield, he's going to grow on me. Don't worry about it. Uh, Lucy, Johnny, Rachel, and my little Penny. That's a lot of women in my life, uh, but they take care of me. My family is very important to me, and they're extremely supportive and understanding of the incredible demands of my time uh, to care for these soldiers. Stacy, my love, thank you for being my rock and biggest supporter. You are the strength of our family and what makes us all successful. To the Garkey family, Jason, Kathy, Tyler, and Natalie, welcome back to the regiment. Jason, you are now the 81st commander of the Old Guard and responsible for this historic regiment and carrying out one of the U.S. Army's most unique missions. As the 81st commander, you will lead this regiment into the future. Thank you for your friendship over the years, especially our time as young captains. You are the right commander for this very historic unit. Thank you, brother, and congrats. It's been my honor to serve the Old Guard. I have relished the opportunity to get to know each and every one of you, and my time here at the Old Guard has been the highlight of my career. God bless the Old Guard, our strong army, and the United States of America, 1st Regiment, the Old Guard. Ladies and gentlemen, the commander of the 3rd United States Infantry Regiment, the Old Guard, Colonel Jason Garkey.
Thank you all for coming today. I would like to thank Lieutenant General Mrs. Murray, Lieutenant General Huntoon, Lieutenant General Huggins, Lieutenant General Johnson, Lieutenant General Leger, civilian aides to the Secretary of the Army, our many military attaches in attendance, other general officers, Major General Mrs. Becker, Mr. Haverlack, Sergeant Major Gooden, distinguished guests, family, and friends of the Old Guard. To your front, I want to take a moment to recognize the outstanding men and women of the Army's oldest regiment, the Old Guard. And especially when we look across this formation, we say they look absolutely spectacular each and every day. That's not just because they rep represent this regiment, it's because they represent our Army. Not just the present, but also the future. Within their ranks are the future officers and NCO leaders that will continue to carry our Army forward. So would you please give them a round of applause. It is a distinct honor and privilege to rejoin the Old Guard. My family has a special place in our hearts for this regiment. I married my wife across the parade field at the Old Post Chapel. My son was bored while I commanded Honor Guard Company. It almost feels like we're coming home. And with all the familiar friends and faces that are in this crowd, uh, represents uh, eight of you are former lieutenants that when I was here, as well as people who were here during my company command tour, and then people that I've served with throughout my entire career. And we're extremely happy to have you share this event with us. This audience is unlike any normal audience because the guest of today's ceremony represents the patchwork quilt of my life. Some of you travel halfway across the country to be here, and the crowd contains family, childhood friends, academy classmates, and the relationships have enriched our lives in innumerable ways, which makes it extra special that you share this moment with us. I acknowledge many people accompanied me and facilitated my success along this road, which led us back to the regiment, and several of those leaders are here today that show me the importance of selfless service and mentorship. Lieutenant General Mrs. Murray provided the Garkeys a role model of a steadfast Army family since our days with the 1st Battalion, 18th Infantry Regiment, all the way to the dog-faced soldiers of the Marne Division. Lieutenant General Huntoon showed this young Charlie Guard Lieutenant what it meant to develop a legacy and to build junior officers who grow into future regimental commanders. Major General Jackman, who I was an aide for, made me think about the critical transition of becoming a field grade officer from a company grade. And Lieutenant General Huggins and Major General Gonzalez gave me an appreciation for what makes our Army run and how to transition after battalion command to successfully contribute at the highest levels of our Army. But most importantly, these leaders at various times during my career helped me evolve to the next level so I could continue to effectively serve our soldiers and their families. I would love to continue to thank many others attending today, but I could never truly extend how each and every one of you have impacted me and helped me achieve this great honor. There's no greater privilege for an officer than command. Major General Becker, thank you, sir, for the confidence and I'll make sure I don't let you down. I intend to continue the solid momentum towards excellence that Colonel Davis and his family have built within this regiment. It's a pleasure to follow such a successful Army family, but more importantly, a friend. I will tell you the love fest that's gone on the last 10 days as we've kind of cut up around the office, and uh, I will point out, anybody that has been watching the weather, um, it's been said many times, but it doesn't rain on Johnny Davis's parade. I would have never guessed 15 years ago that we would meet on some raw field and exchange the regimental colors. It's been said many times, but I want to reiterate, his love for this regiment shows in everything he does. Brother, good luck to you, Stacy, and the rest of Team Davis as you embark on the next adventure. To my family, my wife Kathy, Tyler, and Natalie, they serve as my shining light. Their love and support provide me with a fire to do the best I can do each and every day. To my parents, you raised me in a loving and supportive family and taught me success is best judged by what by always doing what you do best and striving to reach your max potential. And to my mother and father-in-law, thank you for being there and supporting our family, and especially being there for Kathy when harm's way pulled me away. In closing, I want to make a pledge to Sergeant Major Beeson, the leaders and soldiers of the Old Guard. I fully acknowledge that I am the newest member of your ranks. I will make every effort to continue the standards of excellence and positive command climate alive within this historic regiment. I'll embrace the fact that the Old Guard does the last 5% of the mission better than anyone else, and that's what makes us special. I will put the same effort into your development that others have put into mine so that you can achieve your maximum potential. And more importantly, I will always remember, I'm an Old Guard soldier. I represent the United States Army to our nation and the world. I'm a member of the Army's oldest active infantry regiment. I will strive to uphold the honor, values, and tradition of those who came before me. I will never forget my responsibilities to my fellow soldiers, myself, and my country. I am an Old Guard soldier. God bless this regiment, our Grand Army, and the United States of America.
America's Ready, the Old Guard. Ladies and gentlemen, the Army Song. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's ceremony. Colonel and Mrs. Davis will receive well-wishers in front of the reviewing stand. Colonel and Mrs. Garkey will host a reception following the ceremony in Company Hall. Thank you for your attendance and enjoy the rest of your day. Old Guard! <laughs>